Well, thank you so much for joining us for another daily devotion. We're so thankful. And as we know, we have been locked in for quite some time, but we pray that you're exercising caution during this time and pray today that you'd be encouraged. I want to remind you in Luke chapter 8, uh, there's a passage there that demonstrates Christ and his compassion toward those in the deepest of need. And I know there are many of you that that are finding yourself suddenly in the deepest of need. And so I hope that this would be an encouraging word for you, but also that it would encourage all believers because it shows the power of Jesus over the spiritual realm and over our physical realm as well. And so we are so thankful for the scripture and as we can drive through it and see. And so here's what we see is that Jesus crosses uh, the, the lake there to get to the other side. And along the way, he, the disciples and, and Jesus are in the boat and Jesus stands up and calms the storm and all the waves and everything. And they get to the other side. They get to the other side. And what happens is when they get out of the boat, Jesus comes up on the land and suddenly a man rushes to fall at the feet of Jesus. And what's interesting is that he begs Jesus for mercy. He says, Jesus, please, or Son of God, please do not torture me. It's very interesting that this man's demon-possessed, and yet he knows the authority of Jesus. He knows the power of Jesus. In the book of James, James writes, and he says, even the demons know, and they shudder. You know, to be honest, there's a lot of people today that know about Jesus, that know that he lived And they have different views. They think, oh, well, he was a good teacher or he was a prophet or he did great things. And they miss the fact that he's the Savior. When John the Baptist sees Jesus, he says, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so Jesus shows up on this this moment. He shows up. This man's at his feet now begging for Jesus not to torture them. And Jesus says, what is your name? And he answers, legion, which means there was many demons inside of this man. And what's sad about this is that this man had been forced to live outside the city. He'd been forced to live in isolation all by himself in the tombs, in the area of death. And what else happens is that he was chained, but often he would break those chains and be pushed out even farther to the wilderness. And now, by God's grace, Jesus is standing before him. And Jesus cast out those demons and sends them into a herd of pigs. Or in other words, he drives them out into the pigs. Now what's interesting about this is that when those demons enter into the pigs, the pigs immediately go down the hill to their own destruction. In John 10, Jesus tells us that the enemy's plan is to steal, kill, and destroy. Can I tell you that's still true today? The enemy comes to attack us, and he wants to steal our joy, to steal our assurance, to make our attitudes miserable, to make us depressed and full of anxiety. And all those type of attacks are happening day after day in our life. He also wants to make it where we are chained, where we're still in bondage, where we're still living among the dead. In Ephesians, it says this, that we are dead in our trespasses. But the good news of the gospel is this, is that Jesus has come to give us life. And just as he set this man free from those demons and cast those demons into something else so that they would destroy that instead of this man, he's done the same thing for us. See, what Romans tells us is that the wages of sin is death. But Jesus took that curse from us that was going to kill us and cause us to die. He took that from us and he nailed it to the cross. He bore that himself so that we may have life. It's interesting. When the people see what happened to the pigs, they run back into the city and they tell everybody about what happened and how he destroyed all these pigs and all this life and all this kind of stuff. And the people from the city come back and what they find is remarkable. They find this man who at once had many, many demons, who once ran around naked, who once lived among the tombs and who at once isolated himself from everybody else. Suddenly, he is sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed. He talks, and he's ready to follow Jesus wherever he goes. When he asks to go with Jesus, Jesus says, No, go back into the city and proclaim. I hope 
that your life has been transformed by Jesus. I hope that in these moments, when it feels like there's so much chaos, there's so much unanswered questions, that we would come back and know that Jesus is working. And the way he has worked is by giving us the Holy Spirit that will help us, that will guide us, that will lead us. And he's led us to a place where we can now experience Jesus as our provider in a unique way. And so I encourage you to follow Jesus, to know his life-changing power, to see that just as he transformed this demon-possessed man, he can take the worst of us and transform it and leave us sitting at the feet of Jesus and acknowledging and being willing to go wherever he allows us to go. I hope that today you would find hope in his name. I hope that you know that even though life may seem very, very broken right now, very chaotic, or it may just be a time of intense stress and pressure wondering about what will happen, I want you to know that God is in control, that he's faithful to his people, and we look forward to the second coming of Jesus. Another thing I want you to know is that Jesus had to cross through a storm. He had to come into the cemetery to encounter this man. Maybe Jesus is allowing us to walk through some incredibly difficult times or different times so that at just the right moment, our lives and more lives like ours would encounter him and we could rest from all that we have struggled with from all the past years. Today, I hope that you would see that the Lord is a gracious God. He's slow to anger, abounding in love, and I hope that you see that he has provided all things we need in Jesus Christ. Not only that, but I hope that you see that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And we celebrate the forgiveness and the goodness of our God, even in uncertain times. Thank you.